So, uh, good morning, Mr. Ambassador, and uh, thank you for having you here in the province, in the city of uh, Siem Reap, sir. Uh, sir, uh, for the past several days, I have seen on your social media post and also on uh, our article on Cambodian News, a uh, saying that after 50 years, sir, you have uh, came back to the country that you were born, sir, Cambodia. And uh, it has been like five decades, sir. That would be a very long time. So, uh... I saw that you went to the school that your father went to and also you visited your house near a market in Phnom Penh and then you remember some of your, your last memories sir, before you left Cambodia. So my first question is that, sir, um, what was those memories sir, that you remember the most before you leave Cambodia more than 50 years ago, sir? Well, I, uh, I was born in Phnom Penh, indeed, and both my parents are uh, Cambodian, but that was a, a very long time ago. Yes, and when I left the country in 1974, I was only two years old. So two years old is not an age when you have uh, really memories. So uh, but, uh, what I did afterwards was uh, in, uh, I lived in, uh, in France with my mother and my sister, who are the only family members I have who uh, managed to escape Cambodia during those years. And uh, when I had a chance to come back, that was uh, just this week, so 50 years later, and found the family history. I managed to uh, trace back the uh, the high school, uh, the um, Sisawat High School, and the university, which is now the Royal University of Phnom Penh, and the Faculty of Science, where my father studied. And my father was a professor in mathematics and uh, physics. And I uh, managed also to uh, locate the school where he taught. It is now the uh, Nordam uh, Primary School. Yes. But uh, 50 years ago, it was uh, the uh, young girls' uh, high school in uh, Phnom Penh, and that's uh, where my father used to teach uh, mathematics and uh, physics. But uh, you three, I do not have memories as a Diego, but two, you do not have memories. So the other question people very often asked is whether I still speak Cambodian, and the yes. answer is no, because uh, at the age of two, yes, you start speaking. But as I haven't had a chance to uh, practice and maintain my Cambodian over the past 50 years, I, I can't speak Cambodian anymore. The reason why uh, your, you or maybe your family left Cambodia is it because of the conflicting time? Yes, of course. So in the 1970s, you can imagine those were uh, difficult times for uh, Cambodia. And uh, my father uh, sent us, uh, me, my mother, myself, and uh, my sister to France because at the time, and uh, uh, a part of the Cambodian society was still very much uh, connected to our friends, so we, we went to France. But my father himself never left the country, and most of my family members also were disappeared during those years, I like in sentences. So you're not sure whether they, I mean, you, you mentioned that they disappeared, but you don't know maybe the cause of death. Well, we uh, can never have any certainty. Also, there is, there is not really any uh, set of uh, reliable archives from those years, as were the Triangle uh, years. Uh, and uh, not all the deaths were documented, so we do not have a certainty of uh, where my family was sent and uh, where my family is uh, here. But uh, when you were in, friend, uh, in France, uh, like um, you were nurtured up, let's say, in the Cambodian way or maybe in the, in the French way? Well, you receive a French education. It's kind of fun to, uh, even though we had quite a, quite a number of Cambodians in, you know, in France, and uh, most of the Cambodian communities around the Paris and the capital, and I grew up in, uh, in the city in a small town, which is 126 kilometers south of Paris. Therefore, we were the only Cambodians, so but I did not really have a chance to uh, maintain my uh, Cambodian roots, and then I was educated in, uh, in France in the French way. When you go to France, sir, I mean, of course you study diplomacy and you are in the diplomatic career now, sir. Uh, when you go to France, I mean, all those years, 50 years, do you, you know, frequently follow the, the Cambodian political, you know, scenario across the decades? Well, that's really not it. And, uh, I, I'm Cambodian, so I, uh, I know a little bit of Cambodia, and uh, I had an interest in Cambodia, but that was not a part of my question. I didn't specialize in that Cambodia or Southeast Asia. And they showed me. I mean, I, uh, I started my diplomatic career in, uh, in New York, in the United States of America. Uh, I was then uh, in, uh, in Paris, and uh, that uh, I was posted in uh, Brussels, in Belgium, where I specialized in European affairs. 
uh, then I returned to, uh, to Paris because this is uh, what the chemistry careers are made up of. We always alternate overseas positions and uh, headquarters positions. And uh, now I, uh, I have been abroad for uh, 11 years already. So I was in uh, Houston, Texas, where I was consul general of France. Then I was in uh, Fiji, in the Pacific, where I was the, the ambassador of France and then the ambassador of the European Union. And in this, uh, this, uh, September, uh, I, uh, I have been the, uh, the, the European ambassador to uh, ASEAN. So you can tell that uh, I did not have a chance to recommend the results of Asia before this uh, post that I have now as ambassador of the European Union to ASEAN, which is based in Jakarta. And this is the reason why I'm here traveling to Cambodia. Of course, it's very special for me because I was born here, but Cambodia is one of the 10 members of their ASEAN. So uh, this is also the reason why I'm here. I'm visiting all the ASEAN member states, and now I have a chance to come back to Cambodia. Yes, sir. I'm a a bit of a question about, uh, you know, your, your journey to Cambodia again. I mean, after 50 years, uh, before you come here and uh, it is your first time here also, sir, uh, you said you had, you had very little memory of Cambodia because it was a long time ago. So before you came here, sir, did you have any, uh, you know, specific expectation, you know, when, when you come to see your, your birth plate? Sir? No, really, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a very long time. If I know I was born here, but again, uh, at the age of two, you do not form any memories. No, no memories. Well, actually, no memories of this country. I know what my family uh, told me, which is my mother and uh, you know, family friends. So uh, in uh, Phnom Penh, I was able to uh, meet with uh, a gentleman who is now quite old, but who was one of my father's friends, and he's the one who uh, took me to his high school, to his university to the place where he taught, and also we, we tried to find our old house in Phnom Penh, but uh, it doesn't exist anymore. It was uh, where the demolished, something like was demolished, and oh. now we had uh, apartments uh, where we used to have uh, houses. But uh, do you remember the place? Because uh, he, he, he went there, so he remember roughly where it was, even though it's not there anymore, so we knew it was in uh, the vicinity of the Olympic market. We knew it was the third street from the Olympic market. So I, I just walked down the, the third street uh, from the Olympic market, but uh, yeah, of course I didn't see the house where, uh, where I used to eat when I was still in Cambodia. And also because uh, today you're in Siembrip, it is also your first time seeing Uncle Wat, so like maybe the temple that your ancestor built before. So and what is your impression on, on the temple and, and the surrounding area of uh, Siembrip, sir? for you well i wanted to do three things when i uh, when i came to uh, cambodia of course i'm here primarily for work so i had the uh, official meetings and i was uh, fortunate enough that my colleague the ambassador of the year kim Union to cambodia his excellency his man organized a very uh, busy and uh, a very good program for me so that's the first thing i did and i mean i'm here for for work and that's how it was because i wanted to visit the country but uh, i uh, i met with uh, the Minister of uh, Environment, I met with the Minister of Energy, I met with the Minister of Women, I met with the Secretary of State for uh, Quiet Affairs, I met with the Secretary of State for uh, Defense, I met with the European Chamber of Commerce, uh, I uh, gave a lecture at the uh, Cambodian Center for Regional Studies. They have a, a series of lectures called the Ambassadorial uh, Lecture Series, so I was uh, privileged to be one of the guests there. I launched a, a, a photography exhibition It is the uh, Minister for uh, Women because it is on uh, women migrants. I mean, it is uh, in the context of a project which is supported by the European Union, which is called uh, Safe and Fair, Realizing uh, Migrant Women in Rights and Opportunities in, in the ASEAN region. So uh, as I'm the ambassador to ASEAN, my colleague, the ambassador of Cambodia, I uh, thought it would be a good initiative for me to be able to open that exhibition, which is a regional project. And uh, as a standard uh, practice during my visits to the ASEAN member states, I also met with the ambassadors of the ASEAN member states, uh, and in uh, Phnom Penh. But finally, I uh, met with the ambassadors of the European Union member states, which are also based in Phnom uh, So that was my official program, and that kept me uh, extremely busy, because you can tell it's... Uh, it's a very good program, but that's a lot of uh, appointments, it's a lot of uh, engagements. But then the, the second thing that I wanted to do was uh, to reconnect with uh, my family history. That's the reason why we uh, 
I, I managed to, to meet with uh, this friend of, of my father who took me around, and uh, that's what I shared on, uh, on my social media accounts, on, uh, on my X account, and then my Facebook and on my uh, Instagram accounts. So, uh, indeed, you, yeah, you, uh, you, you referred to it. Oh, well, yeah, I visited my father's uh, school, I visited his university, I visited uh, the place where my uh, former house was, yeah. and I, uh, I visited also uh, the place where my father used to teach. But uh, then the third and last thing I wanted to do coming to Cambodia, because it is a, a world famous site, I wanted to come and see Angkor. In the Angkor Wat So that's when my, uh, my wife uh, joined me. So uh, she joined me with, you know, just before we, uh, we, we traveled to, to Siem Reap. This is the first time I'm here, and this is, uh, this is a very nice city. I'm very happy to be here. I visited the Angkor temples uh, on the course in the past two days. And that's really what I would recommend to any visitor, by the way, to spend at least uh, three days here to visit the, uh, the diversity and uh, the variety of uh, temples and sites in uh, Angkor, because there is really uh, a lot to see. And all the temples tell a different story, all the temples they are a little bit different. Still, it's, uh, it's really good to uh, have a chance to uh, visit this uh, site of uh, Angkor, which is really one of the world wonders. Uh. I mean, it's not a surprise that it was... Uh, registered as a UNESCO World Heritage Monument. Um, but for, really, this is what I would recommend to anyone who would like to visit Cambodia as a tourist. Of course, they can skip the uh, the work part, as I was here for work first. They may be not, uh, they, they may be don't have a, a family history in Cambodia, but if they want to do some tourism, of course, they can visit Phnom Penh a little bit, which I haven't had a chance to yet. But certainly they have to uh, come to Shem Red because this it is the like the history of humanity, so in in a way, yeah. yeah. It is. I mean, I've uh, I've traveled around the world. I visited many of the UNESCO heritage sites, but uh, this one is uh, really breathtaking. Let's say for the past ten years, sir. I mean, what what has EU you know done in particular to uh, strengthen the cooperation between EU and ASEAN, sir? Like, um, can you let? mentioned things so important. Yeah, and the European Union and ASEAN are what we call dialogue partners. Different. ASEAN has uh, 11 dialogue partners and uh, the European Union is one of them. Actually, we're one of the uh, oldest dialogue partners of ASEAN because that relationship traced back, uh, back uh, 47 years. 47 years. Sir. And uh, in the past uh, few years, maybe not uh, a decade, but we saw uh, a great uh, acceleration and uh, improvement of this relationship between the European Union and uh, ASEAN. And it started when uh, the European Union and ASEAN decided to enter into a strategic partnership. You know that there are uh, different uh, types of relationship between the ASEAN and its uh, dialogue partners. And certainly being a, a strategic partner is, uh, is a step uh, up compared to uh, simply being a, a dialogue partner. So the uh, strategic partnership between the European Union and uh, ASEAN was uh, launched in, uh, on the 1st of December 2020. So this is uh, quite recent and that's uh, actually been uh, four years ago. But uh, then the uh, next uh, milestone in our relationship was on the 14th of December 2022. Where for the first time, ASEAN and the European Union had a, a summit. So it uh, commemorated at the time the 45th anniversary of the relationships between ASEAN and the European Union. And during this uh, 45th anniversary commemorative summit, all the leaders of uh, ASEAN and the European Union met in uh, Brussels, in Belgium, which is the headquarter of the European Union. And they adopted uh, a joint leader statement, which is a, a sort of a vision of document and also uh, a plan of action for the years 2023-2027, which is a, a roadmap to uh, what we want to achieve between the European Union and the ASEAN. So when I arrived on the 1st of uh, September 2023, just uh, last year, I had a, a very clear framework to work with. And um, so my, uh, my task is uh, really to uh, keep the momentum and uh, continue to improve the relationship between ASEAN and the European by definition, as we are strategic partners, our partnership cuts across the three pillars of uh, ASEAN, which are the political and security pillar, the economic pillar, and the social cultural pillar. Yeah. So our cooperation extends to all these uh, three pillars. Here in, uh, in Cambodia, that is uh, reflected through the wide range of uh, official commitments uh, I had. I uh, particularly discussed uh, 
issues pertaining to uh, cooperation between uh, the European Union and uh, ASEAN. Um, we have a, a portfolio of cooperation projects, which is worth 250 million euros. So you can see that the European Union invests uh, quite a lot of money in, uh, in ASEAN. Of course, uh, some of them uh, benefits uh, Cambodia. But I would say what uh, I would like to achieve between uh, now and the time when I leave in uh, three to four years is uh, one, uh, to uh, make sure that we continue to increase our high level of commitment and uh, yep. rating so that uh, our leaders can meet regularly through uh, regular summits. Two, that uh, maybe we work towards the next stage of uh, our relationship, which can be uh, a comprehensive strategic partnership. So we now have a few uh, dialogue partners of ASEAN, which uh, have achieved this uh, level of uh, comprehensive strategic partnership. Yeah. So we have uh, Australia, we have China, we have the United States of America, we have India, we have Japan. And uh, that, uh, that is an improvement compared to the level of the strategic partnerships. So I hope we can move towards that uh, level of engagement yeah. and uh, a comprehensive strategic partnership. Then the European Union and uh, ASEAN uh, are uh, very large uh, economic partners. Yeah. Actually, the European Union is the third largest uh, trading partner and the third largest foreign direct investor for ASEAN. Usually, uh, we uh, continue to grow this uh, our economic relationship in the area of uh, trade and investment through free trade agreements. Different. In the case of Cambodia, there is no need for a free trade agreement because uh, Cambodia is still a least developed country. So they have uh, free access uh, without duty or without quota to the European market. But uh, one day, Cambodia will graduate from that status of a least developed country. And then uh, it will lose automatically its uh, duty-free quota-free access to the European market. So maybe it will be time then to engage in a negotiation for a free trade agreement between uh, Cambodia and the European Union. Nowadays, the European Union already has uh, a free trade agreement with uh, countries such as uh, Singapore and Vietnam. And we're negotiating free trade agreements with uh, Indonesia, with Thailand, with the Philippines. And we're assessing... Uh, whether we could launch uh, again a free trade agreement negotiation with Malaysia. Finally, we have a people to people relations. So the European Union is uh, also very much involved in uh, the green transition and the uh, energy transition, in the digital transition. And uh, we also invest in uh, investment uh, in uh, infrastructure. So we have uh, an initiative which we call the uh, Global Gateway. Uh, it's a commitment from uh, the European Union, its member states, uh, and uh, its financial institutions of uh, 10 billion euros. So it's a massive uh, financial commitment. Here in Cambodia, it is uh, directed uh, towards uh, uh, water projects. Water projects. And uh, capacity building in uh, health and uh, education. Uh, you mean water project like uh, water management? Yeah, and water management and uh, yeah. hydropower, uh, so on. This is, uh, this is what we do. That I mean, I'm not the ambassador of the European Union to Cambodia, so if you, you have uh, any uh, more specific questions about Cambodia, I should refer you to uh, our delegation uh, of the European Union to Cambodia based on being Uh Maybe the last question for today's interview, sir. Mm -hmm. um, because we are, of course, uh, getting out of COVID-19 for several years now, and uh, Cambodia is ramping up its uh, you know, tourism capacity, so maybe just your comments or your, or your perspective, uh, how can Cambodia or maybe what can Cambodia do in order to attract more tourists from, from the EU sir, to visit you know, Cambodia as, as a whole or maybe Uncle what specifically, sir? Well, Cambodia is uh, very much uh, unique in the, in the sense that it has a, a site which is in core, which is world famous. So you can ask uh, everyone in the world uh, if people uh, know a little bit about Cambodia, they will know about it. Uh, so it's, uh, it's unique in the sense that you have a really a, a jewel to, to market to the rest of the world. You know? And I think uh, personally, the experience I had uh, here in the Asian Rep and uh, visiting Angkor was uh, very, very good. I mean, uh, the level of service uh, which is uh, provided is, uh, is very high. So it's a very high quality service. Uh, we had... Uh, a tour guide which uh, spoke uh, English, but uh, you have uh, tour guides who can provide uh, a very good uh, tailor-made experience to uh, 
tourists traveling from around the world. I mean, we could have chosen the, the French-speaking uh, tour guide as well. Uh, the, the temples are very easy to access. Uh, the infrastructure is, uh, is very good. So I think you, you provide a very uh, high level of, uh, of service and you're very lucky and very fortunate to have a site which is uh, recognized all around the world. It is actually on the, on the flag, on the national flag of, of Cambodia. So people cannot, uh, cannot uh, overlook it. Uh, but uh, I think now the, uh, the challenge is, uh, is always the same. You, know, that you also have to compete with uh, many other nations. And uh, even in Southeast Asia, Cambodia is not the only country which uh, relies on tourism for a very significant share of its uh, uh, of its uh, wealth and uh, job and uh, income creation. So uh, at the end of the day, uh, it's it's good to have uh, a good experience when you reach the place. And I had a very lonely experience with my wife here, but uh, I would guess uh, the the main challenge would be connectivity. How you bring me a pee with and go to the country. It's like, how do you come? I was, uh, I was uh, at uh, at Siem Reap International Airport. It's a, it's a very good and very modern airport. But uh, first and foremost, you have to convince people to come and visit from where they are, wherever they are. And we all know that uh, the main sources of um, high value tourists are in the, in the developed world. So that's going to be in, uh, in America, that's going to be in, uh, in Europe, that's going to be in. Uh, the wealthy countries of well of Asia, so you just have to uh, make sure that uh, you are competitive because this is a competition, and that you provide a good uh, airline connection to come. But I, I think Cambodia is on a, on a very good path. At the same time, because uh, Angkor Wat is a, it's uh, it's a very ancient site, it's also uh, very fragile, so you don't want to uh, uh, exceed or. Uh, and have uh, too many tourists in that place because uh, you, you have to keep it at, at a, a sustainable level yes. uh, to make sure that we do not have uh, overcrowding and uh, over-exploitation of, uh, of the uh, incredible resources you have here. I think this is also something tourists uh, look for. Already now you have uh, quite a number of tourists in uh, Angkor, but uh, I think it's uh, more pleasant if you visit places which are not uh, too overcrowded. So it's more like to descend for like... Uh, you have to keep a good balance. I think in that core, everybody goes to uh, Angkor Wat, everybody goes to see the Bayon, everybody wants to see uh, Taprom. So the main uh, sites are uh, very much uh, visited, but uh, this is a, a very large site and uh, we went to uh, some of the temples, which are a little bit uh, farther off the beaten paths, uh, we went to Amat Desray, which is uh, quite in the north. We took uh, what uh, what the uh, tour guide called the Great Tour, which is uh, a little bit longer than the, the short circuit. In effort, really, I would encourage everyone coming to Cambodia to spend at least three days in uh, in Siem Reap to have a chance to visit uh, all the temples of uh, Angkor. And because they are so unique, I mean, uh, I, I'm sure I'm really, I will come back. So thank you, Mr. Ambassador, for your interview here in Simbri, and I hope you have a pleasant stay uh, further in, in Cambodia, sir. Thank, thank you. you, sir. Thank you very much.